Hi guys, so this is an update I've been waiting for for a while now for Chrome OS, and that is the Android compatibility update. So with this update, Google has finally added the standard Android Google Play Store to Chrome OS. And this is pretty awesome because it means that any app that you could have ran on your Android phone or tablet is now available on the Chromebook. As you can see, the app opens in a vertical window and you can full screen it and uh, pretty much every app on the phone is here as well. So I'm sure you're all curious, how does this actually end up working out if we try to run things that are you know, primarily designed for a cell phone if we're running this on something like a Chromebook and we'll see how it goes. So this is Asphalt Extreme, kind of um, a little bit more representative of a more, uh, I guess, extreme uh, gaming title on Android. This is quite graphically intensive, and uh, we'll see how the Chromebook handles this, given that there is no cooling fan in the Chromebook. It's completely passively cooled, and to be honest, it doesn't have that great of a processor, so let's see what it does. So yeah, so far the gameplay is pretty smooth, the loading times are pretty great, about what you'd expect from a high-end cell phone. Um, and then once we get into the game, the gameplay looks fairly smooth, there's the normal jitteriness that comes along with all these asphalt games, I think it's mainly because there's a lot of camera shake, but the game itself is pretty smooth and definitely playable. The one issue I did notice is that uh, without a touchscreen or in, in the case of this game, a gyroscope, you can't really steer the car unless you have like a gamepad or Xbox remote plugged in. Um, so that would be a definite recommendation if you're going to do some serious gaming on Chrome OS or Android in general is to get a wireless controller or in the case of the Chromebook you could use a USB one as well so a standard Xbox 360 remote would work great or um, you know anything with a USB. As you can see here, I just kind of have to drive along the wall because uh, there's no way for me to steer. Moving on to a title called uh, Bethesda Pinball. This is more representative of kind of a mid-range, not incredibly graphically intensive game, but one that relies more on speed and responsiveness in order for a good experience. And this game runs incredibly smooth, way smoother than asphalt. Um, and it's definitely playable. Also with this one, uh, it has keyboard support, so the shift keys do actuate the um, the flippers, so it's much easier to play than Asphalt 8 was without a controller. And uh, this is kind of a theme that you're going to have to look through when you're when you're seeing if a game will run well on Chrome OSs. Is it a game that relies a lot on the touchscreen, or is it something that can support a keyboard? Obviously, your keyboard-supported games are going to be easier to play, um, but you can get away with some touchscreen games. And also, another thing is. If you look at an app that's mainly designed to run in portrait mode, it'll only be able to run in a window, and you, you might have some issues when you try to full screen it. So now let's take a look at one of my favorite games, uh, my favorite platform game actually, Super Tux. And uh, this is kind of an emulated version for Android. It's primarily on Linux and uh, Windows, but this game being ported directly from the computer, has full keyboard support, and is quite responsive in uh, Chrome OS. Um, this is actually really great that you can run a game like this, which is highly dependent on uh, reaction time and the speed. Like If there was any lag in the system at all, you'd be able to tell with this game. And uh, it does feel a little bit slower than, let's say, this game running on Linux on my desktop, but the lag is honestly not that bad. It is certainly playable, and I feel confident that I could beat even some of the harder levels with this setup. Because um, even even with, with this game, if you have a keyboard that has a slight amount of lag, you can even tell. Um, I guess that's true with most platformers, but this one is particularly sensitive to those changes. But yeah, with the if you if you're gonna play games that are emulated, this update uh, to Chrome OS is very important to you. I would expect, considering that that means you could have 
a Chromebook like this that is a relatively cheap device, very portable with great battery life. You can take it on the road to play your emulated games or uh, yeah, basically use it for what you would use a tablet for, but with the extra versatility of having USB ports and uh, having a much larger battery and, of course, keyboard and mouse and the ability to do more productive office type work than would be typical of a tablet. And this is the app I was most excited to try out on Chrome OS, uh, believe it or not, and this is the Netflix app. The reason, of course, I'd, that I was excited for this is that, well, not only it being a pretty good interface for, you know, using Netflix rather than the web one, but I was curious to see if the download feature would work on Chrome OS. So, when I went into the settings, and sure enough, you can just download uh, your Netflix titles just like you would on your phone and store them on the Chromebook, which is pretty awesome. And given the great battery life that I've experienced with this Chromebook, I'm really excited to take a road trip with this. Having a 13-inch 1080p screen and 10 hours of battery life, the only limit here is going to be the storage. But, you know, if you can queue up a, a season of a TV show on here, it would be pretty great for road trips and you know even as a singular use device for a Chromebook it's really not a bad idea. Of course there's still some weirdness with this whole setup uh, and the fact that the Google Web Store and the Play Store both now exist in Chrome OS and in fact look if you look there's two icons for uh, Play Store right now on my screen but um, and yeah I've clicked on the wrong one quite a bit <laughs> even in the just a couple days that this update has been out at this point. But uh, hopefully they eventually merge these or remove some of the redundancy. So here's the part that some of you may have been most interested in, and that is how does the Chromebook actually compare when we look at some hard numbers and benchmarks to some of the more modern Android smartphones. So here I have installed 3D Mark, and I'm going to be running this and Geekbench 4, just because I feel like they're fairly comprehensive. Um, and, you know, I, I like how 3D Mark is fairly consistent score-wise across different phones and different platforms, so uh, let's see how it does. And here are the results for 3D Mark running the Ice Storm Unlimited test. And as you can see, the Samsung S8 Plus is the clear victor in this test with the highest composite and highest graphics score by a large margin. However, if we look at the CPU physics score, um, it tells a completely different story. In the CPU physics department, the OnePlus 3T is the victor with the Chromebook in the middle and the SA Plus at the uh, bottom of the pack, which is kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. You'd think that um, for each successive Qualcomm CPU generation that the CPU and the GPU would both gain uh, performance, but that is clearly not the case. Um, this is really not that surprising though because Qualcomm, of course, is going to be optimizing their chips for the best graphical performance because that is truly what is important when you're looking at a high-end smartphone. You want to have a smooth UI experience, and that's not something that's delivered by having a good CPU. It's being delivered by having an extremely good GPU, and the Samsung S8 Plus clearly reflects that. If you look at the Chromebook 13, overall its performance is definitely the lowest, but it is still respectable if you compare it to smartphones from a year or two ago but it's just not quite up to par with modern flagships. The Geekbench 4 scores show a slightly different story, but the Samsung SE Plus is once again at the top of the pack with the best multi-core performance, and uh, kind of going down from there, the OnePlus 3T in the middle and the Chromebook at the bottom of the pack. And their single core performance is mostly representative of this, except in this test the OnePlus 3T slightly edged out the SE Plus, though not by a significant enough margin. So this is the last chart I made, and this is just a quick comparison of the CPU frequency and the number of cores. As you can see, the 835 that is in the S8 Plus has the most number of cores by double, but its average frequency is slightly lower, uh, whereas the Chromebook processor is pretty comparable to the Snapdragon 820 if you ignore the fact that the uh, Snapdragon is ARM and the Chromebook is x86, which is quite a big deal when you're comparing different processors. So anyway, thanks for watching this comparison video. I'm likely going to do a full review of the Chromebook as a kind of a productivity and um, classroom machine in the future. And if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments or if there's anything else you'd like me to test out on the Chromebook. But um, overall, this update, 
has been pretty great. I especially like the ability to get apps like Netflix on Chromebook, and of course being able to play a few games here and there is nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.